A brief look at the X10 Pro wired in smart coupler and repeater a model XPCR and this is the diagram for it. it's on the unit too and a friend told me before just to use uh, high voltage capacitors like maybe X or Y type thing and just put them across the legs in the box because this shows three legs most only have two of course and then the last wire will end up not being used but is this just capacitors or is there an actual um, active circuit in here is what I was wondering so I'm gonna pop it up and take a look now there is a red LED on the unit so there's got to at least be a little circuitry to power that but let's see if there's actual active circuit in here so here it is the first time me looking will it be a gutless wonder with a few capacitors and uh, a drive circuit for the LED or will there actually be op amps in here and filters <laughs> oh wow we do have filters on this side and an op amp probably or some kind of processor and a clock so yeah quite a bit of guts on this side here first I saw this side and thought oh well, capacitors that's all there is but here's the rest so we do have active circuits Probably for forward and return. X10 Pro has got a active return on a lot of other devices. So the device will tell you that it received the instruction and executed it, basically. Unfortunately, the Pro stuff's pretty expensive. And for that price, you can get something other than X10. X10 is kind of a, it's an old standard. It works on the zero crossing to send its signals. Unfortunately, nowadays, with the solid state power supplies, switch mode power supplies, making so much noise, and also other things like that, they have a lot of trouble working nowadays without interference. And a lot of people who do get them working without interference have to put filters in in different places and stuff like that. I haven't had a whole lot of luck doing that. Anyway, I'll put it back together and I'm going to install this puppy. I may be making my problems worse. I've got a phantom signal coming around 8 or 9 o'clock p.m. every day. It was turning on one device, uh, device number 4 here. It shifted to device number 8 for a while. It was doing both, but only a day or two. So it's really kind of strange that I'm getting interference like that into the system. Something that doesn't usually happen with X10. I mean, it usually doesn't work because there's a blocking signal, but to get a stray signal in that triggers it. And it is possible one of my neighbors is using X10. I think I've got my own transformer though. I think we're on separate transformers and of course the signal could go through the primary I suppose. Unlikely. My neighbor, the old owner at my neighbor's house did have X10 stuff. So it is a possibility that the new owner might have inherited some of that stuff. And that we're using the same house code and everything else. I'm using a house code I thought was pretty unique but it turns out a lot of people use it. You definitely don't want to use A or B but... So I just tie wrapped it in in an empty blank spot in my box here. There's a little LED that lights when it gets through a command. Another job on the to-do list is to repack this box. I've got to neaten it up a little bit. Put all the 240 volt breakers on top, I think. Top couple of rows. I've got all these Challenger breakers, which... Uh, one of the 120 breakers did not trigger when it should have. 240 volt breakers do seem to work. At least I've got my 30 amp dryer on a 20 amp breaker and it does pop occasionally. Challenger. But I just don't trust these Challenger breakers. I'm going to get rid of them. So far the unit's working pretty well. I've got most of the lights in the house are on X10. So if the security device is triggered, they'll all brighten and dim and sync throughout the house. Which means that even someone from the road could see something's going on because the whole house is brightening and dimming in a cycle, you know, up and down, up and down. Anyway, before I put this in, if I used a command off a remote, turn the lights on or off, there would be one or two lights that skip the command. In the bathroom is always a troublesome area. I don't know if there's... I'm going to investigate that further in the bathroom. I chose several different LED bulbs and they all seem to interfere with the X10 in one way or another. 
I kind of suspect there might be something wrong with that fixture, even sort of a little bit of a diac effect somewhere in one of the connections. So I'm going to investigate that a little further. At any rate, all my lights come on and all my lights come off in sync with this unit installed, where before I'd skip one or two, depending on conditions in the house. If there's something noisy plugged in, it might take out a light or two from the control. Now everything is controlled. The only hiccup I've had is with dimming. And dimming does work most of the time. The first time I tried it, though, it wouldn't work. First and second time I tried it, it wouldn't work. And it seems like dimming, sometimes if there's other noise going on in the house, it might jam up the dimming. With dimming, you hit a device number on, and then you can use the dimming buttons. If anything happens in between using the dimming buttons and the device on signal, um, like another device, you know, gets in there somewhere, it'll stop the dimming from working. So I think noise might be responsible for that glitch. There is an LED on the device though, so you can tell, you know, if it's got a command or not coming to it. So that, that'll be some troubleshooting. But at any rate, everything's working great except for a few wrinkles and dimming once in a while. But most of the time dimming works fine. So that's the only uh, hitch is in dimming. But reliability in terms of all devices responding when they should, that seems to be greatly helped by this device. So I'm glad I put it in. I was thinking of putting it in the box in the garage instead of the main fuse box, but that's probably not a big deal either way. Just want to put it somewhere if it turned into a ball of flames it wouldn't start a fire because it's in a metal box, you know. Not that it's likely to. That was about it. That's my thoughts on this device for those still using X10 in this day and age.